I'd like just to give you a bit of background because I believe that uh, it's probably important to understand what uh, my thoughts are uh, to that extent. Um, I am primarily an entrepreneur. I've been doing so like for the past 25 years. I've set up mm, several companies in uh, building construction and then in digital, um, industrial design, then web design, and then mobile uh, systems, uh, mostly in the music space, and then uh, a bunch of different startups in different areas like co-creation, the music again, and uh, marketing, a lot of marketing stuff. So that's um, that was great to me because uh, it gives you a sense of things which is obviously very different from what you could uh, get when you're a state member. You know, so when I got elected at the National Digital Council, um, you know, it's like, you know, you, you are a very, I would say, foreign, very different, very alien uh, type of body into uh, the state, and you see, you perceive things uh, from uh, a very different manner. So that's, that was um, how it was when I got in, and actually I spent a year at the National Digital Council, and I believe that our recommendations were very disruptive. You know, what we said to the government by then was not expected. And although it was not that controversial, it was not something that they would uh, want to do in the first place. So that's uh, uh, after a year, we were perceived like uh, an internal opposition, you know, like uh, just because we were raising point issues and uh, things that they wouldn't do otherwise. And I believe that was clearly our job. And, um, you know, uh, as a result, uh, which is a little bit strange, I was seen by the opposite, what was back then the opposition, as an ally. And, and when they end up, the, the council, they elected me at this, uh, they proposed me at this position of uh, digital champion. And I'm still a little bit, <laughs> I would say, I'm not uh, clearly in any camp in the sense that I'm still quite critical about uh, and, and sometimes arguing a lot about uh, uh, the policy of this government again. And that's probably one of the key statements, I believe, uh, for this new future is that to me, there is no more left or right. It's, it's over. There are, there are people who think uh, looking at the future and, and conservative people. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's how I perceive it. And I'm quite sure that it's it's, it's very true in terms of, of political positioning, at least in France, uh, we see this debate. I can argue with both sides and I can agree with both as well. So that's, that's probably important. So um, to speak about uh, France as a, a digital uh, nation, I just w wanted to first highlight a few things about uh, where we stand. Um, we overall, we generate 91 uh, billions of euros uh, out of the digital economy, which seems to be big. And actually, it's big. It's bigger than agriculture, for instance, uh, which is a big thing in France, as you all know, with the PAC and so on. Um, but uh, still, we're the 20th country in terms of uh, GPD, GDP share, uh, which means that we're not, you know, we're the, f the fifth economy in the world. But uh, we're not the fifth economy in terms of the digital uh, economy. So we're still lagging behind of most of uh, a lot of developed countries. And um, I believe that although we're trying hard to, I would say, um, obtain a better position, it's still something that it's um, to be done. Um, it represents 26% of GPD. In terms of growth, of, of GPD growth, uh, which is fairly good. I mean, it's, it's probably among the best in, in Europe for the last three years, but it's still behind uh, UK, uh, Ireland, and uh, the US. To give you an example, the US uh, takes tw uh, 37 of if its GPD, GDP growth out of uh, the digital economy. Um, it's growing that fast that we can expect by, by 2020 uh, it would be bigger than tourism, which is a big, big part of the economy in France, as you all know. Um, it represents 700,000 uh, jobs 
which is great. Uh, no, it represents one million uh, jobs, out of which seven hundred thousand has have been created uh, over the past fifteen years, which is a lot, obviously. And um, I would say that to me, the, the, it, it's very common to say that. 80% of the overall economy is subject to big change uh, due to uh, digitalization. So that's uh, one of my key points when I'm talking to officials in the government, is to say, you cannot stay out of it. You need to get in and the fastest, the best. And that's, that's obviously uh, very difficult because the French government uh, is um, peculiar in the sense that it's very centralized. We invented... Uh, you know, the centralized government, modern centralized government, and actually it stayed as such since then, you know. And I believe it was very efficient during the second era of uh, um, the, the, the industrial revolution, uh, because it was uh, a revolution where you needed to, to make some long-term programmation, and actually our government was probably very efficient to do so. We made the TGV, uh, the nu nu nuclear plants and all this stuff, and it worked, uh, basically. But uh, now that we're getting into a more disruptive economy, it's something that I cannot cope with. That's, that's extremely different to, difficult to, to make them understand that um, it's no longer centralized. It needs to, to be uh, bared by people, by what David Cameron would call uh, the big society, and believe me, <laughs> that's not something they would, uh, in first place, uh, uh, take it uh, as such, you know. Um, yesterday, for instance, I made a big conference. I was the, the, the keynote, um, um, the opening um, talk at uh, an open data conference organized by the government. And it was interesting because it's actually officials from the government trying to understand what they could do in terms of policy opening up their data and so on and um, it's although I was very pleased that they, they, they organized such event it was clear that uh, I was going too far for them you know I was saying that not only should you leave all the data open but you should let the citizens being not I would say facing the government but being at the heart of the government and uh, when you get into uh, details, <laughs> it's not something they easily uh, cope with. Um, so I would say that um, something which is obviously very difficult for me is basically to train people, to explain, to, to let people understand what is digital. It's, um, you know, when I got in the... the uh, National Digital Council in first place, I had clearly too high expectation about what they could potentially understand. Uh, I felt that I would speak about co-creation, about crowdsourcing, about whatever, you know. And actually, it was about telling them what was, uh, that internet was not only about communication, and about get, getting elected and about piracy and so on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's probably something which to me was the most um, bizarre experience was uh, just to realize that although these people are extremely smart, they can leave apart a very significant uh, piece of our future. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it was kind of a shock to me. So I, <laughs> I downgraded my expectation and I started to uh, explain them what we should do out of the digital economy. And it was obviously kind of a disappointment to me uh, to be obliged to not go to, I would say, the, the most interesting uh, piece of the digital economy in first place. Um, so now I would like to give you a, a bit of um, an highlight of what I believe are the strength, the weakness, and the opportunity of our country. Um, so I would say that um, what we're probably good at is uh, doing engineers. Um, we have historically a good experience in the, what we call the core, uh, polytechnic, all this big school. And, and actually, to you know, hire many people in all, 
almost um, all continents. And I can say that, you know, it's, uh, it makes a lot of sense to keep the air in, the, in France. First, because we have a lot of uh, tax exemption of, of um, I would say, you don't pay very much for uh, R&D people. And secondly, because these people are overall very good. You know, I tried things in India, in Tunisia, uh, in Singapore, uh, in several places, in the UK as well. And I have to say that, uh, to me, the, the best place to have my core R&D team is in Paris by far. So that's, that's obviously something we should keep. Actually, there is a, a debate in, in France about the fact that um, young people are less and less interested in doing uh, engineering stuff. And I, I can see it's the same in, in, in most of Europe. And that's something we should be probably a little bit worried about because it's one of the key advantages I can see uh, across Europe. It's overall the quality of uh, scientific people. And uh, we need to pay attention that uh, if we don't tell these people, this, the, I would say the, the young people, that uh, it's, it, it's good jobs uh, and it has high potential of, um, I would say, a better position in companies, uh, we would uh, permanently leave uh, and lose uh, a key element of our um, competitiveness. Something which uh, is strong as well is uh, mathematics. We have good education regarding that aspect. And, um, you know, if you look at uh, the, the field medal, uh, we're the first country in the world in terms of field medal per inhabitant. You know, we're uh, before uh, the Russians and the UK and actually uh, we're very good at it. So that's great because you know you have in this big data world we're entering into uh, it's pretty important. Algorithm is the key of it and it's it's about math. Um, we're good at um, infrastructure you know thanks to Xavier Niel and Free uh, we have um, one of the lowest costs for um, um, for ADSL so it's like, uh, in terms of, as far as I can remember, it's one euro per megabyte delivered, and it's it's one of the cheapest price in the world. You know, it's uh, I guess the, I believe that um, Singapore is cheaper. Uh, you have a few uh, developing countries that are cheaper, but overall it's it's very cheap. Um, and. Um, the tax system regarding R&D is, is pretty efficient. So as I said, um, you don't pay any social task, uh, tax uh, or almost none on, on R&D people, which is great, which is great. So as a result, you have a kind of, uh, it's, it's getting very difficult to hire some people in France. That's the, the bad side of, uh, of the, the thing, but uh, it's still, um, it's great. It's very efficient. And I believe that there is a research that is about to be released by the EU on um, um, the clusters and the places uh, where are, there are more startups, uh, which is uh, probably saying that France uh, is doing great. Uh, I don't have the number yet, but I've spoken to a few people working on this research. It's, it's supposed to be released very soon, probably next week. Uh, and it's basically saying that uh, France and Paris would be leading before the UK and before Berlin in terms, you know, I'm not, it, I don't put any personal emphasis on that. Uh, I'm just saying that it's what it, 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 it's probably saying. Um, so in terms of weakness, I believe that I said uh, overall the centralized government is, is acting against the notion of uh, Disruptive innovation. That's very, very sad. Then they're not getting it. So they're not. Um, it's 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 not going as far as most of European countries. For instance, um, I had a, a tax control uh, this year, this past year, and I went to the the, the person in charge of uh, my my tax control uh, with all my bank accounts, and he told me, so I don't see you. Um, before two months, 
you know, and I say, why is that? He told me, because I need to put all this in Excel, <laughs> and then <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have a discussion. So it, it's, it's clearly some things that uh, uh, the IRS in, in the, US, the US wouldn't do, is they would get access to all your bank account in the first place, and that would be much more efficient. So that's the type of thing we would uh, encounter in many places in the government, and that's very weak. Um, I believe that um, we also have a lot of um, bureaucracy. Uh, we have a very strong bureaucracy. And um, um, the, the President Hollande said that he wants to do a, a simplification shock, uh, which I believe is great, but I, we still need to see what they can do out of it, because obviously it's been growing and growing since uh, decades, mm -hmm. and uh, it's almost unstoppable. Um, also bad at talking English, that's probably a little bit of a concern into an economy which is a lot about uh, English language. And um, it's not improving, it's going not in the right direction. Um, although it's interesting to see that probably um, the ones who are the most interested into internet are keen on uh, learning English. I've been surprised to, 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 to bump the kids who were like a uh, program genu genius in terms of programming and who could speak uh, a fairly decent English recently. So that, that's good as well. Um, and overall, I believe it's not really tied to the digital economy, but it has a link, uh, and which is the, the fact that the, the primary school are not really good. It's going you know, the PISA, uh, which is supposed to be released in November, uh, would downgrade France of like um, three ranks, and it, it's a pity. Um, we have a lot of opportunities. I believe that, um, like a lot of countries across Europe, we have plenty of opportunities. Recently, the, the president announced a new tax law, and it's, to me, um, it's a real breakthrough. It's a, a real breakthrough because it's something we've been asking for like decades. Um, Sarkozy didn't do it. And this government, which is uh, very socialist by essence, and who's not, who hasn't been perceived as being very ally uh, with the startups, uh, has done some, this announcement was great. The first thing is that they would gear 1% of the life insurance into uh, the digital uh, economy f for financing startup. One percent is a lot of money mm -hmm. because uh, life insurance represents like almost 10, 10 billion per year. So uh, one percent is uh, 100 uh, million euros, which is not bad at all. It's, it's, it's great. And uh, it, could be, it could be even up more than one percent. Um, so that's, that's good news. Um, they, made a, they want to do a crowdfunding law, which would ease the crowdfunding uh, from startups uh, for financing any type of project. And it, it was just impossible. It wasn't uh, allowed uh, until now. And um, they would want to also change, that's a little bit uh, tricky to explain, but we have what we call uh, PEVA. Uh, PEVA means... Uh, um, it's a kind of um, a bank pocket on which uh, you wouldn't pay tax for buying some stocks, for some equity. And uh, they would oblige uh, the owner of this um, pocket to, to, to invest like 6% of it into uh, um, innovation. And that would be a lot of money as well. It's probably like almost half a billion. That, that would be... A, a very good um, um, opportunity to 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 uh, to put more money into startups, um, and um, they also they are also talking about an entrepreneurial visa. So that's uh, that's great as well. Uh, we need to uh, be able to attract people from uh, many places, and I believe that one of the opportunity of France is uh, francophonie. You know because we. We have a natural, um, I would say, basket of uh, 400 million of people speaking French. And we don't have that many links with all those people. 
And it would be easy for us to say to these people, you can travel and, and come either permanently or for some time to, to France uh, to, to set up a startup or to work for a startup or whatever. And uh, we haven't been doing that as, at all. I mean, it's exactly the contrary. You know, I have a subsidiary in Tunisia and I can tell you it's a nightmare to, to get just one of, the, of this uh, uh, person of this team to come to Paris just for a few days. It, it doesn't work at all. That's a problem in many aspects. And um, um, they also said that they would uh, teach uh, entrepreneurship at school. And believe me, from this government, that's a pure revolution. Uh, we wouldn't expect that at all, yes. at all. And that's great because uh, so far, what you learn at school is that you know, uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's entrepreneur are just bad person. Uh, <laughs> it's it's basically I can tell you, I've, it it tells you about union, about all this type of stuff, and that's it. Um, uh, and and last but not least, um, uh, they have decreased the, the tax on capital gain. You know, and that's that's probably to me the most bizarre thing because uh, the last fall they have increased it. You know, a lot. It was just killing everything. It was just uh, a shame. And with so much complaint, you've probably heard about the pigeon uh, that uh, they got it. They understood that they, they would kill innovation overall. And it was it was very bizarre because you would buy a, a piece of heart, you wouldn't pay any tax on it. It would be removed from your uh, impost sur la fortune, the, the fortune uh, tax, and um, you would uh, pay a lot if you would uh, gain money out of, um, of capital. So that's, and, and they completely shift their mind, and now you would pay, not at least, at, not at, uh, the, at in here, but like around, the minimum is like 12%, I don't know about here, but it's not much, it's, it's very cheap for, for friends. And um, so that's, that's great. Um, in terms of other initiatives, uh, Fleur Pellerin, uh, our ITC minister, um, minister, announced that she would launch some clusters, meaning that she would gather she, uh, close to universities, uh, different startups uh, buying real estate and making sure that you would have some big company coming around and so on. And they, they said like uh, two days ago that they would want to do uh, around seven clusters across France with a big one in Paris, centralized economy still. Um, and um, the thing which I believe we, we're still trying to do but that uh, hasn't been done yet is reforming the state with IT. There are plenty of places where we can put a lot of IT and actually when you have a country which spends uh, 57 of uh, the GDP uh, um, into state spending, uh, would you increase the, the IT uh, spending that would have some effect on any, any aspect of um, the competitive economy? Um, we have some good, uh, recently they, they appointed some very good people at the head of both what we call SGMAP and ETALAB. Uh, SGMAP is the head of um, the IT administration in France and the guy who runs it is, is a great person. He has an entrepreneurial background which is very new as well for France. And ETALAB, the guy is also an entrepreneur in charge of the open data. And both um, recently they made a talk, I was uh, involved in it, and uh, the head of ETALAB said, I want to hack the government. And you know, <laughs> it's great because he explained that he couldn't rely anymore in the, the, I would say, the programming systems that exist into the government, and he wanted to work more on the API style, you know, by giving away the data and letting external companies and uh, associations developing uh, initiatives. So that's great. I believe it's going in the right direction. Um, but I believe that we still need to improve quickly a few things. First, we're spending 1.4% uh, uh, from the overall budget of the government into IT, which is less than the OECD average, it's 2%, and it's, f it's much less than the UK, for instance. 
Um, and uh, we need to be careful about, um, I would say, the, um, the fact that uh, th there is still a lot of tax pressure on, on entrepreneurship in France. Uh, uh, wealthy people uh, with the, the fortune tax are very much tempted to leave the country. And actually, as a result, we have only uh, 4,000 uh, business angels versus uh, uh, 50,000 in the UK, uh, which is a good proxy. And uh, in, in the US, it's uh, almost 300,000. So that's, that's a very big difference. And actually, um, I would say in, in the, uh, the normal, the, 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 the industrial economy, uh, it's not that important to have business angel. But in the disruptive knowledge economy, uh, it, it's very key. So we would uh, we definitely need to improve that very quickly. Um, I believe that, uh, as I said, uh, there is probably um, a better understanding on what we can do out of uh, the digital. Uh, I heard in, uh, François Hollande speaking about it like three times during the past two or three months. and. Believe me, uh, it's it's new. It's new. He didn't speak about it. Uh, you know, there is a joke in uh, our world. You know, there is a famous picture to uh, before the election of François Hollande at his desk with a beautiful Macintosh, and actually the Mac was was not plugged, and you could see it. <laughs> <laughs> you could <laughs> you could see it on the picture. So that's. That's a good example it's of now plugged in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and it, it actually I uh, I was told that it was just brought for the pictures. Yeah. You know, so um, <laughs> um, and so you know I, I believe that just as, as a conclusion I would say that this country is still lagging behind, and and what to me surprises me the most with with France is. Um, you know, um, we have um, we are capable of reacting uh, sometime very strongly. You know, you never know when, but uh, when we had the Prussian in in France and in Paris in uh, 1870, uh, like more than a century ago, uh, we paid uh, five billion of uh, gold franc to get rid of the Prussian. You know, and by then everybody said that it was the end of France. That France would collapse because we we paid so much. It represented two years of uh, GDP, GDP. So it was you know imagine paying that uh, amount now you wouldn't survive. And actually, um, the uh, thirty years that came right afterwards were probably what we call the Belle Époque, uh, a period of, of big growth and uh, where you know at the end of this period, France uh, were registering 40% uh, of the overall patent uh, in the world, 40%. Mm -hmm. So that was probably the best uh, innovation time uh, for France ever. You know, so I think that it was kind of the same after the, the Second World War. You know, the country was purely destroyed. And still, we recovered pretty well. And we had the, 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 what we call uh, les trente glorieuses. Um, uh, which were great as well. So that's kind of the same. We're not... Uh, um, just after war, but kind of, you know, the crisis was so strong uh, for most of the European countries that uh, uh, it's um, it's uh, it's 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 a recovery. Um, I'm I'm still very much believing in uh, the strength of my country. I believe that uh, you know integration into Europe is is definitely key. We need to personally, I very strongly believe that. We need to have more uh, political integration into Europe. Uh, you know, Europe uh, to me doesn't work well, uh, to tell you the truth. But it's not because there is too much Europe. It's because there is not not enough Europe. Uh, it's clearly um, what I do think. Um, just to to finish up with this um, talk, I, I I would want to say that I'm launching an initiative in France called Cutting Kids. Um, it's based on the fact that um, one out of five kids in uh, ending the primary school drops out uh, and they cannot um, write or uh, calculate properly, which is, you know, in a developed country, a pure shame. 
So what we've discovered with a few um, entrepreneurs, French entrepreneurs, among which Xavier Niel, um, um, Grandjean and a few others, is that, um, you know, we, we got a few of these dropouts in our company and they were great developers, you know, coding people. So we believe that if we can detect these people early, you know, they, the one who have dropped out but still want to do some gaming design and so on, uh, we may be able to take them, teach them uh, code, and finally uh, make, make them come back into the system. So that's the goal of it. And it has worked in many countries. It hasn't been launched in France, but uh, we believe that we can probably uh, launch it pretty soon by this fall and and make it uh, very scalable. We want it to be able to reach uh, a few, I would say, uh, the goal is for 40,000 kids uh, by early next year. So that's mm -hmm. pretty ambitious. But we're working with it, with it, on it and, uh, and we believe uh, it will work. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.